In source energy rogerstone is a unique plant because it is a dedicated anaerobic digestion facility receives all of the waste from our host factory um, RF Brooks and we separate organics from inorganics all of the inorganics are sent for recycling and our target is to be a zero landfill installation. The plant itself receives about 15,000 tonnes per annum of uh, a mixed waste. In addition, we will be producing 4,500 tonnes per annum of organic fertiliser and 1,000 tonnes per annum of plastics which will go to recycling. The waste comes to us at the AD facility in a number of ways. One is a combination of packaged and unpackaged food. We also receive sludge from the on-site effluent treatment plant and a potato sludge which is a combination of material from uh, the cleaning of potatoes as well as uh, the peeling of potatoes so a kind of potato porridge. The food waste is brought to us in a series of Dolav plastic containers. Each one carries about 700 litres um, in reality, that's probably about 300 to 400 kilos per, per container. The packaged waste is lifted by forklift truck into a depackaging machine, which essentially provides a shred followed by a wash and um, a compaction area. The idea is to squeeze the organics from the plastics which have been opened up um, using the shredder. From the depackaging plant the organic waste drops through into a sump and from there it is pumped on to one of three feedstock holding tanks. We currently have three feedstock tanks. One is dedicated to DAF or the effluent treatment plant sludge I should say. Uh, one is dedicated to the potato sludges and the other one to the food waste. We keep each feedstock separate from the other, but as it's drawn off into the pasteurization area, we are able to blend the different feedstocks in different ratios, uh, depending on the amount that's being produced at that time in the factory. So the three feedstock pipelines come together in a single line and pass into one of these four tanks, which represent the pasteurization Plant. The first two tanks are essentially used to preheat the, uh, the substrate and the second two tanks are used to further heat and maintain the substrate at 70 degrees for one hour. The digester itself uh, is maintained at about 38 degrees. So the pasteurized substrate goes through a series of heat exchangers which are used to raise the temperature in one of the two preheat tanks which I just talked about. From pasteurization the substrate goes to a, a large holding tank um, and it is then pumped across um, outside into the main digester tank. The main digestion tank holds approximately one month of the average production from the factory. It is linked to a smaller tank which holds approximately four days worth of production. So all in all we are able to hold somewhere around 35 days worth of production in these tanks. The substrate in the digester is constantly mixed and releases uh, methane gas which is trapped in the roof of the digester. From the roof of the digester the methane gas is withdrawn and passed to our CHP engine which is 
just under 500 kilowatts uh, engine. We take hot water from the engine jacket and the exhaust of the engine which passes through a manifold and from there we take out the hot water for the various parts of the plant. The chimney outside the building sends the flue gases um, up to 12, 12 meters uh, above ground. They're monitored on an annual basis and we comply with our environmental permit issued by an uh, environment agency. The digestate itself from the anaerobic digestion is pumped forward from the small four-day residue tank to a separator which um, is essentially a screw press which separates out the fibre from uh, the liquid in the, di in the digestate. The solid fraction is transferred using a series of screw conveyors um, into an agricultural trailer which is then removed to replace uh, chemical fertilisers um, for their arable crop. The liquid fraction from uh, the separator passes directly to sewer through a V-notch weir which is monitored by Welsh Water.